As Methodist Healthcare Ministries celebrated its 25-year history, it recognized opportunities to deepen the impact of the work it's been doing across South Texas by sharpening its focus on health equity. Methodist Healthcare Ministry seeks to improve the health and well-being of both the people and places it serves. Health equity is the lens through which Methodist Healthcare Ministry seeks to reduce systemic barriers to health by supporting resilient individuals and families. This video series focuses on each of Methodist Healthcare Ministry's seven regions, sharing community voices whose stories shed light on the history of inequity in those regions and the people and partners who are making strides to change it by going on a journey from charity toward equity and building self-sustaining, thriving communities. Lo que más me encanta la comunidad es la gente. La gente maravillosa, es amable, es cariñosa, hospitalaria. Yo llego a casas acá que no necesito tocar la puerta. Uno entra a las casas con una tranquilidad y una familiaridad. Hay muy buenos vecinos, se ayudan mutuamente, se protegen mutuamente, comparten. Es, no hay violencia así que uno vea que, que las personas viven en conflictos. No, se, se ayudan mutuamente. You know, I think in our community, being on the border and uh, having such a diverse uh, community with people from different backgrounds, uh, the big thing is individuals may not have access to health care early in life, so therefore there's you know disparities there in terms of you know getting the proper uh, screenings that are necessary and, and treatments. We are a community with 85% uh, Hispanic population, and a lot of them have uh, lack of access to health care. If I got sick right now and I apply for Medicaid, it's a book about this big that you have to, that you have to apply. And the questions are the same over and over again. You know, it's all about income, income. Well, I don't have, I mean, it takes a week to get the application to them and then another week to get, to get the, uh, online, uh, or the phone call. And then it takes another week to see if you're approved. And then by, if you're real sick, by that time, maybe you're dead. We need to create this uh, access to healthcare at a low cost for people that don't have insurance, so people can get any type of, of healthcare there, including all these preventative measures that we are missing in town. Porque muchas veces las personas padecen, tienen padecimientos que tienen años con estos padecimientos, y sin embargo no pueden ser atendidos. Uh, por motivo, primero, quizás que no tienen un trabajo, ¿verdad? Y no tienen la forma de tener una aseguranza para ser atendidos. You look beautiful today. Oh, thank you. I love you. And I love you too. Oh, <laughs> I have a lot of problems with cholesterol and a lot of problems with that psychotic, psychotic nerve, that nerve. And it gets me down some days, I get up some days, knees just pop when I walk to the store to, to get something or, or, and right now they said, said my, my cholesterol's real bad and getting, and this arm is just going to sleep and, and just numb at night and I have to just keep going during the day. Yeah, it's hard for me to find a job after this sickness and stuff came through. I used to have three or four houses but nobody's getting in one the lady I worked for seven years, she passed away and then her friend moved to Brackettville, so I don't have no jobs and nothing no more clean and I'll rake yards, I'll clean yards. Y esas son las personas más vulnerables porque no tienen una aseguranza, no tienen la forma de acudir a un médico. Porque saben que yendo a las emergencias después va a ser una cantidad muy grande que tienen que pagar y a deber, ¿verdad? But if you go to the hospital and I went one time and I still got the bill for $2,000. And all they gave me was Tylenol and uh, cough medicine and what the doctor told me. So a lot of people that have, don't have access to adequate treatments for chronic issues like hypertension or diabetes uh, or cancer screening. The problem is, is that when you have such a limited amount of physicians or, or, or specialists in a particular uh, medical field, what ends up happening is, is the wait times and the, you know, the, the abilities to get appointments and, 
you know, you literally, you know, run into situations where you do try to get appointments and you're told when you've got to wait three months or two months. So they have to go to other big cities like San Antonio and obviously they have to either drive or get on a bus. So I think transportation is also an issue. And it's hard because a lot of people don't see it in a way I do. There's four, there's six of us. I don't, if I go to San Antonio, if I don't need, if I drink water, I'm fine. But that's me. But <laughs> you, you got to take four. I can't leave them anywhere. I mean, it's hard to leave them anywhere. So you got to feed them. If you stop at McDonald's, one, two, three, that's, that's $80 right there, just in food. But that's only one way, you know, way back, because we spent the whole day plus another day. The other piece is, of course, a cultural thing. Our foods, our customs, our ways of, of eating and, and our diets sometimes are, you know, may, may not be an inequity, but is, is certainly a, a big part of, of health and the concerns in our community. La comida, lamentablemente, es una comida que no es sana. Se come mucha comida procesada. Nuestra esencia en la alimentación es el arroz que, y la harina de las tortillas y el maíz. Que eso es terrible, porque esos eh, carbohidratos es lo que más perjudica nuestra salud. Y no com comemos poco eh, la, la parte de las proteínas, carnes, comemos menos carne porque es más cara. Y no estamos acostumbrados a comer verduras y a comer frutas mucho. Eso nos perjudica mucho en la salud. There's no healthy places to eat food here. I think there's two restaurants. Uh, you can just see like all the food, fast food chains. I mean, they're great, but... But still, do you want to get a salad? You cannot get one that easily or that at a low cost. So people just go to the cheapest options, which again, contributes to this same ongoing uh, negative loop cycle. I've also had the opportunity to work with the Valverde uh, Border Humanitarian Coalition, which we worked with the community to help in immigrants coming you know, newly to our community. It's a short term respite center for migrant families uh, that are brought to us from Border Patrol and they have their documentation and uh, we are assisting them um, and allowing them to call their families, contact their loved ones and then securing funding to their final destination. This provides just a real clear step-by-step um, -step process for them. Uh, while they're here, we feed them. We also provide a shower trailer if they would like to, you know, freshen up. And so we don't see this as a political issue where you choose who's going to have health care or who's not. This is um, done on a humanitarian level. Without an organization like VVBHC, that entire demographic would be completely uh, ignored. Health equity means to me, um, in a much broader sense, giving individuals, regardless of, of, of race, of age, of gender, of ethnicity, um, the opportunity and the uh, ability to, to get the, the health care that they need. La equidad de salud es que todos tengamos acceso a la medicina, a los médicos, pero no se puede, es muy difícil. Pero yo pensé que en Estados Unidos había más equidad en eso, en la salud. Y sí, cuando hay una persona que está en necesidad urgente, pues claro que es acogida. Y también United Medical Center ayuda muchísimo. Cuando las familias carecen de recursos, ellos ayudan porque tienen como unos fondos para ayudar a las personas pobres. Pero en general, yo pienso que falta muchísimo, sobre todo por las aseguranzas que son tan costosas. O sea, todos nos vamos a morir, pero sí que muramos de una manera digna, no a través de una enfermedad causada precisamente por no beber agua, causada por no alimentarnos bien, por, por de, descuidarnos la alimentación, causada por no hacer ejercicio. A mí me dolería muchísimo eso. Una comunidad próspera no significa una comunidad rica o millonaria, sino significa una comunidad que sepa eh, que la salud es importante, salud mental, física e, y espiritual. Eso es una comunidad próspera. Participation is the key and knowledge is the key and individuals must be engaged and must be involved. Um, it's very easy to sit back and point out the problems. It's harder to go out there and fix them. And, and I think that 
yes, uh, there's a lot of work to be done, and, and I encourage in, individuals from all walks of life to be, in, to be involved in some capacity, not only for yourself and well-being, but to help others. And I think in terms of, of thriving mentally, physically, and emotionally, um, you know, we can do better, and uh, we will get better.